taking a page out of Donald Trump's book, a Republican who was defeated on November 3rd decided to show up for work anyway. Oh, okay. Uh, according to the Chicago Sun-Times, defeated Republican Jim Oberweiss decided to attend orientation for new House members on Thursday and Friday, even though Representative Lauren Underwood, a Democrat from Illinois, has been projected the winner of their 14th congressional district race. So now wait, um, this guy loses and shows up anyway. Well, I'm here for orientation, guys. But you didn't win. Yeah, but well, you don't know that. <laughs> on Saturday, Oberweiss posted an image uh, on Twitter of him touring the White House. You can see it's in the sidebar. Uh, and this is at a uh, White House event for GOP freshman members. So he's like, yeah, I, I'm, I'm taking the tour. I'm meeting people. I'm hobnobbing. Uh, this is where I'm going to work. But wait, you, 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 you're not going to work there. You didn't win. You, you lost. Uh, on Saturday, um, that's when he went to this. The race was called by the Associated Press on Thursday. Normally, if it's a really, really close race, and, a, you know, like, uh, we don't know, it's like a toss-up district or whatever, then they're going to wait to make sure to count, all, you know, obviously, they're not going to project the race to be over before they've counted all the ballots. Now, you might think, well, well, well wait a minute, but well, they should count all the ballots first, right? And then certify the results before they call the election. That's not how it works this time. It's not how it's worked any time. That's not how it worked in 2016. So if you're complaining about it now, but didn't complain about it then when Donald Trump was winning, there's a little bit of hypocrisy in that. Because again, this is how it works. Generally, you look at places that are swing districts that generally go one way or the other. You look at trends, you look at polls. There's a whole thing, whole host of things that uh, people will look at before they will actually call a race. Because the, the thing that they don't want to do is to do, what is it, uh, uh, do, we, do we defeat Truman? Right. They do not want that to happen again. So that's why these are these or news organizations are actually incredibly careful before they call a race because they don't want to be wrong. And so they'll look at all the different factors. And generally, that's why, you know, they'll <clears throat> they'll call it if they call it on election night or at least a day or two after. Well, then they're pretty confident that that person that they have projected to be the winner is the winner. So on, like I said, Thursday, two days later, this was called. Uh, and so they were pretty confident uh, that Oberweiss did not win. In fact, uh, at that point, the count put her, um, this is or, uh, Underwood, put her at 4,288 votes ahead of Oberweiss. And now the Oberweiss campaign says, what? No, you can't call it yet. You can't call it yet. We have provisional ballots. Oh, oh all right. Sure, sure. I get that, right? In fact, here's a spokesperson, Travis Aiken, saying the numbers being reported are accurate, but Overweiss still has a chance. There's still a chance. We think there are more provisional ballots out there than have been said, and he thinks that that's going to somehow make up a 4,000 uh, vote difference. Ah, great. Wonderful. Uh, in fact, we do have some updated numbers from there, right? Uh, so far, with more mail-in ballots being counted, Underwood has, the, like, the vote total has changed. Underwood now has an even bigger lead, going from 4,000 288 votes to 4,688 votes, according to the Associated Press. <laughs> Oops. Sad. Uh, nonetheless, Aiken had told reporters on Thursday that he would not concede and would seek a recount after all the ballots are counted. Uh, so now, of course, he will. He added the campaign will pursue the recount once ballot counting is completed by November 17th, that is tomorrow, and the results are certified, which could take longer. All right, well, and guess what? Until then, what's he going to do? Keep showing... Is he going to show up to work? He'd be like, hey, uh, I won. I get to be here. So I'm going to show up to the orientation. 
Uh, and, you know, sad day for you guys. Oh, hey, Lauren. Fancy meeting you here. Uh, that's because I actually got elected, not, not you. Yeah, that's going to be kind of awkward. <laughs> I actually don't know when they get started, but uh, could, could, could you imagine, though? Like, hey, what are you doing here? What are you doing here? I won the election. You didn't. Oh, we don't know that. Uh, we're still uh, they're still counting the ballots. I've already been called by the Associated Press. Don't care. The Republicans. These are Republicans, man. Holy crap. <laughs> I mean, now, here's uh, another hilarious excuse, by the way. Uh, and when he decided to, uh, uh, as to why he decided to go. On Friday, Aiken said that Oberweiss was on the plane when the Associated Press called the race on Thursday. Okay, but then you got off the plane, and over the weekend, you still went. I don't know why, what that has anything to do with anything. It doesn't make any sense. Like the whole, what, you were on the plane the whole day? You couldn't, you didn't have your cell phone for two days? That somebody couldn't tell you not to go to orientation? You just decided to show up anyway? What is wrong with you? I know, I know. He says, you know what? Uh, no, um, they told me to show up anyway. They told me to show up. Uh, and that's that's what Aiken says. Uh, he says, Oberweiss, attending the session was not supposed to be an in-your-face statement. It was something that he was advised to do, so he just did it. He just showed up. New member orientation is held only once. Yeah, I didn't want to miss it. I didn't, I didn't want to miss it. I didn't want to miss it. You know what this is like? This is like me showing up for orientation for a job that I applied for, but I didn't get. What do you mean I didn't get the job? I didn't agree to that. You didn't ask me. No, I say that I got the job. I want to recount. 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 No, I'm sorry, dude. We went with somebody else. You're going to have to go. Fake news. Recount. Fake news. <laughs> now, here's the other thing, right? I think here's, this is a real reason that he wanted to show up. Uh, as I explained, that the orientation mainly deals with the logistics of getting a house office up and running. Sessions and trainings are held going over office budgets and equipment, staffing, ethics rules, and how government money can kind of be used. All that stuff, I feel like you can find out, like, without having to go to these these sessions, right? I, I feel like this information is, like, available. However, the last part, new members also use FaceTime with leaders to lobby for committee assignments. Ah. So this guy probably wanted to show up, even knowing that maybe he's not going to win. Very likely he's not going to win. So he shows up to be like, hey, I'm Jim Oberweiss. Let's have a chat. I'm pretty sure I'm not going to win. But guess what? I could be a lobbyist. Definitely doing those, you know, that that connecting to try to make friends in Congress so that maybe the next time you run, you can get some of their support. Or if you go into the lobbyist business, then you already have some connections. You know what I'm saying? And so I think that's the most relevant, um, the FaceTime. Absolutely. Uh, and interestingly enough, this is a precedent that Donald Trump has set for Republicans, that if the media... Uh, it has called an election. Well, we're not going to care about that anymore because the media doesn't call elections. No, no, no. The media can't actually decide an election. We've got to wait until oh, they're certified and all this stuff. You you realize that like once the other party concedes, all right, concedes the election usually should happen. You know, a few days, maybe on the night of, if the results are decisive enough, decides to you know. Okay, I've conceded, whatever. Now we can get on to the process. Because there's a lot of stuff that happens behind the scenes during presidential and congressional transitions, right? Now, especially during a presidential transition, that's where it's really important for Donald Trump to concede in the first place so that Joe Biden can start getting his administration set up and he can start working, you know, getting uh, uh, intelligence briefings, coronavirus, you know, um, uh, what is it, task force meetings, uh, all that stuff, and to start getting things set up so that when he takes power January 20th, he can start work. 
Like, let's get to work. Let's do it. We're all caught up. Uh, let's go. Let's do a seamless transition. Donald Trump does not want to do that. He is not interested in a seamless or peaceful transition from what it seems. Uh, and so it's just, you know, he's being a baby. <laughs> okay. Uh, and, and one of the things that they're using is, well, we've got to do all this stuff first uh, because we don't believe the quote unquote fake news media uh, has the power to call elections. And again, this is projected winner. Obviously, if there's an issue with electors and it gets complicated, but generally they'll look at the numbers and they'll be like, well, uh, it appears that candidate A has more votes than candidate B. Uh, so it looks like this this candidate A won. Well, that's not difficult, okay? <laughs> that's not a hard thing. So, and and that's not like evidence of some conspiracy. It's just saying person with bigger numbers wins election. Wow. And and even you know, of course, when you talk about the uh, electoral college, again, bigger numbers in the states generally means that you get more electoral college votes, and that bigger number. Also, better than smaller number mean you win with bigger number. So, and of course, Joe Biden has all of those things. And I'm trying to explain it to a Trump supporter, and I don't know if I'm going to get through. But anyway, uh, and it's funny, you know, when you try to explain these things, they're not going to listen anyway. So because I mean, it, nothing matters anymore. The facts don't matter. Facts don't matter. Just Nothing. It just, it just doesn't. Numbers, facts, uh, everything apparently is just fake news. If you enjoyed this video, please give us a like and share with your friends. You can subscribe and help out the channel by becoming a patron. It's patreon.com slash Jeff Waldorf. Or you can become a channel member as well by hitting the join button below.